Mo Fan was an ugly, disgusting, worthless loser, who was so dumb that he couldn't even answer a single question on his magic tests, and was too broke to eat anything except rice from the dumpster. His father worked 24 hours a day as a driver to make ends meet, and he had to take care of his disabled stepsister because she lost her legs when she got stuck in a washing machine. However, he was hypnotized one day while wearing an heirloom pendant, and was transported into a world filled with magic and mysterious beasts, where he became the only human to unlock the two most overpowered elements instead of one. But before discovering his powers, his miserable life was still the same. So after failing the last entrance test, his father told him that he could always become a truck driver. But when Mo Fan said he was determined to become a mage, his father promised to help him get into his school. A few days later, he was walking with his ugly friend who was simping over the idol coming to town. But just then, Mo Fan saw his father begging Master Mu to let his son attend the Magic Academy. However, after Master Mu told him that his son was worthless, he offered his entire house in exchange for letting his son attend the school, so Master Mu accepted. When he saw that, Mo Fan wondered why the world was so cruel towards them. After all, he couldn't forget about Moon Inksu, because when he was 10 years old, he remembered the way she begged him to run away from her abusive home. But after a few hours, they were caught, and Master Mu's gang punished his father along with him, kicking his father into a table and injuring his back. That day, he warned Mo Fan that he would break every bone of his body if he ever got close to his daughter again. And ever since then, Mo Fan promised to become the greatest mage. The first day of school finally arrived, and the teacher told all the students that they'll be touching the crystal ball to determine their magical element. As he let those words out, Mo Fan's pendant glowed, and all of the students recognized Mo Fan as the failure who failed all the previous tests, and laughed in his face, saying that he'd never compare to their powerful daddy Mu Bai. When his turn arrived, Mu Bai awakened the ice element, one of the most powerful talents with only a 1 in a 100 chance of awakening it. On top of that, he had already awakened the first dark star on his badge, making him the strongest guy in their class. When he went to his seat, he wondered why Mo Fan's useless face was sitting next to him, but knew that he'll be expelled anyway. One by one, all the students unlocked their skills until Mo Fan's turn arrived, and all of them thought that he wouldn't even be able to awaken a magical ability. As soon as he got to the crystal ball, all the students laughed because the crystal ball wasn't lighting up. But after taking a deep breath in, Mo Fan felt the universe changing around him and saw the bright lights of the galaxies as the purple one began sucking him in. Just then, someone awakened the thunder magic from the other class, so all the students left to check it out. They were shocked as thunder was the most powerful element, with only one in a million students being able to awaken it. At the same time, Mo Fan also awakened the thunder ability, but the sphere began glowing red after he awakened the second rarest element, the fire element. Unable to decide which one would be better in his battles, he realized that he'd been in this same dilemma when playing the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Because when he had to choose which one to kiss, marry, and kill between Aina, Madame Ceres, and Hellborn Sprite, he first realized that they were all better than his useless stepsister. However, while Hellborn Sprite had a bakery, she looked like she'd be the one eating him with that face, so she was the one to get killed. And with Aina having the best plot, sorry I mean lore, he decided to kiss her and marry Madame Ceres since she would cosplay like it's Halloween every day for him. And with Raid's Halloween event, you will have the chance to dig up some of the greatest epic and legendary Halloween-themed champions, or even one of the many Amazon gift cards totaling $20,000. All you need to do is download Raid's Shadow Legends using the link in the description, copy your in-game ID, and then head to the link on the screen between October 15th to November 10th to try your luck. And even if you're an existing player, you'll find a special promo code to earn an in-game gift. So what are you waiting for? Scan the QR code or download through the link in my description to get these free items, and create a team even more powerful than MoFan's rare abilities. Because when he saw the light glowed red, he realized that he was the only one in existence to awaken two elements, and when the guys came back, they saw that he had actually awakened the fire talent. All of them were shocked because there was less than a 1 in 1000 chance to awaken the fire talent. But Mo Fan realized that if they were this shocked about his fire element, he was about to have a field day with their asses when he reveals that he had awakened two abilities instead of one. However, he wanted to keep it hidden for now, and shock everyone when the right time comes. Two months later, the teacher explained that in order for them to cast their magic abilities, they must awaken all seven stars at once, and when Mu Bai went on to show his power, he awakened five of his stars. The only one who was stuck at a single star was Mo Fan and the guys called him an ugly weak loser. The idle simp tried defending his friend, but the guy told him to take a shower already before leaving, 
As days passed, Mo Fan realized that not a single person wanted to be his friend. But when he was alone, he knew it was only the fire element that he was weak in. After all, he can already control six stars of his thunder element, but wondered why he could never awaken the seventh star. Just then, he realized that he forgot his stepsister in the park, and when he went to her, he saw that she was sitting depressed alone. He tried looking for her wheelchair, and saw a bunch of thugs had stolen it away from her. Their leader had tried stealing the wheelchair until she gave him her number, but Mo Fan came up and called them scumbags and demanded they return the wheelchair. However, the guy told him to run away before he puts him in a wheelchair like his sister. But after hearing those words, Mo Fan became determined to unleash all of his powers. Before their eyes, he began awakening his galaxy once again, and started to awaken all seven stars, releasing his Wrath of Thunder ability towards them, and electrocuting their boss. All of them were shocked to see that he was a mage, and begged him to spare them. One of them apologized that he wastes all his money in crypto rug pulls, and begs Mo Fan to give him another chance so he told them to get out of his face, and they began running away. When they were gone, he told his stepsister Zinxia that they'll be home alone, so she needs to be careful around washing machines. At the same time, Mubai told his uncle that he wants to make sure Mo Fan is expelled before the end of the week. When the night came, Mo Fan wondered why his stepsister hadn't come into the shower with him, so he decided to just activate his fire magic in the water but burnt off his millimeter Peter. After he was done showering, Zinxia wondered why he had a third leg, so he told her that he had to make up for her useless legs. So, that one there was a violation, personally I wouldn't have it. She wondered how he was able to use thunder magic already, because only people involved with cults were able to improve in such a short time. However, he told her that he'd been practicing alone for months, and told her to go get stuck in a washing machine already. When he closed the door, he realized that he needed to keep his thunder abilities a secret, and that he needs to start working on his fire powers. The following morning, Mo Fan saw the hottest teacher, Miss Tang, and all the guys realized that they need to change their underwear. She told them that she was here to show them the power of fire magic, and activated her abilities to throw a fireball at the target, burning it in an instant. This was the level 1 fire burst spell, one of the strongest abilities, and Mo Fan thought he was about to become overpowered with those new abilities. At the same time, Mu Bai wondered how Mo Fan would get expelled since he was too powerful to get a D on the final exam. So his uncle revealed a dark stone that would suck all of his magical powers, making him too weak to even score a D on the test. Knowing that he had to conceal his thunder ability, Mo Fan tried controlling the stars to activate his fire magic but could never get past the fifth star. With only a month left, he decided to continue cultivating his magical powers, but had already depleted all of his magical energy. So with all his remaining energy, he began meditating for days, and as weeks passed, he continued expanding his magical abilities. By the time the final exam arrived, Mu Ningsu joined her father to oversee the exam, and all the guys thought she was the prettiest girl they'd ever seen but Mo Fan could never forget the time he spent with her. To show them how the test would be conducted, she froze the sphere in front of her to the point that it broke before their eyes. All the students were tested one by one, and when Mu Bai's turn arrived, he was given an S grade for his abilities, even though the highest grade achievable was just an A. Everyone thought he was the best in the school, but Mu Bai wanted to also test out his magical release, and summoned an ice sphere as he launched it towards the ground, freezing the target in front of him. He had achieved B-grade, and Ningxu thought he was average, but Mo Fan's turn was next. Ningxu's father told her to leave already, but she wanted to see Mo Fan's abilities, and when Mu Bai's uncle gave the signal, one of the teachers walked up to the crystal to leave the black stone beneath it. This was all part of Mu Bai's goal of making Ningxu realize that Mo Fan was a complete waste of space. When Mo Fan tried releasing his energy, he realized that all of it was being sucked away, but the teacher realized something was off, so he tried to concentrate once more, and before long, the stone broke, and the teacher graded him at B rank. All the students thought he was way better than they thought, but Miss Tang told them that the crystal ball was faulty, and that she insists for him to be tested again. After hearing that, Mu Bai's lackeys thought she was right since there was no way he would be strong enough to get B-grade, so the principal agreed to retest him, but said he would fire Miss Tang if she was wrong. So before everyone, Mo Fan released his magic abilities, reaching an S-grade, and emitting power that was even greater than Mu Bai's. Oh my! Oh my! Can you eat p However, he wasn't done, and asked to also be graded on his magic spells. So before everyone, he released all of his power into towards the target. As it began to burn, all the students left their floodgates open again, 
the principal told Joyan that Mo Fan was a special kid who deserved a reward for his hard work, so Joyan decided to summon Mo Fan. When he arrived, he told him that he was willing to forget their grudges and how he had tried to run off with his daughter in a secret marriage. As he showed him a fire magic gear, he told him that it would help him in harnessing the power of his elements, and that he would be considered a new member of their family. However, Mo Fan thought he was a moron. He told him that he was not his puppet who would be washing their dishes like a filthy slave, and promised to haunt him in the afterlife for beating up his father all those years ago. Joanne began to emit a powerful ice that froze the ground, and was ready to destroy Mo Fan instantly. So the principal told Mo Fan to apologize to Joanne, but he told him that he would rather drink his vomit. He told them that he would only apologize if Joanne told his father that he was sorry for beating his ass. Looking to impress the family, Mu Bai offered to kick Mo Fan's ass in battle and to force him into pleading for forgiveness. But Joanne thought Mu Bai was a useless loser who would get his ass kicked and decided to offer his son for the duel instead. When Tang Yu told them that teenagers were not allowed to duel, Joyan suggested that they duel in the next few years and promised to wipe Mo Fan's face across the floor of his bathroom. A few weeks later, the teacher welcomed the students into the elite class and told them that they were the best students in the academy and that they were ranked by their abilities. When Tang Yu appeared before the students, they noticed her well-rounded plots and wondered if she would be great at plot development. So she told them that she would continue to be their magic teacher and was looking to show them some special magic. The teacher began telling the students about a magical star bracelet that had the ability to increase a student's progress within a short time, and that whoever lost his bracelet would be expelled from the academy. Later that day, Mo Fan decided to unleash a flame at a wooden target. At the same time, Mu Bai froze up his own target and wondered how Mo Fan became the best student in the school. As they laughed at his ugly face, Mo Fan decided to approach them and wondered why Joyan's son was being allowed to train with a star bracelet for several months into their duel. Mu Bai revealed that his star bracelet increases their ability by 20%, while the Mu family owns a special bracelet that increases their ability by 40%, and said that he has no chance of ever winning the duel. Having heard enough, Mo Fan began to leave and launched a flame at a wooden target. That night, while he was looking at the star bracelet, his pendant began to draw towards it. So he wore the bracelet and tried meditating, but the pendant turned into a worm and consumed it immediately. Afraid he would be expelled from school, Mo Fan tried shaking it awake, but Tang Yu appeared beside him. She realized that he had lost the bracelet and told him that he would be kicked out of the academy. Having no other options, Mo Fan decided to confess the truth and told her that his pendant had eaten the bracelet. She wondered how he acquired the pendant, so he told her that it was given to him by his grandfather. Tang Yu told him that the pendant was a magical gear that works as a stats booster and that it consumed energy to upgrade itself to the spirit level. Frightened by this discovery, Mo Fan suggested that she keeps it for herself, but she called him a moron and told him to protect the pendant at all costs. She said that his pendant would continue to grow more powerful by feeding on magical gears and spirits, and asked him to be cautious of its power. That same night, while Mo Fan was meditating, the pendant began to glow with a bright mysterious light. After a few days, while the students were heading for an excursion, Tang Yu told them that monsters were lurking outside the city, and warned them to stay within the safe zone. At the same time, Mo Fan noticed that his fire element had begun to upgrade, and hoped that it would increase to level 2. When the students arrived at a new facility, a man introduced himself as Jan Kong who was their instructor. He told them that he would be sending them on a bounty hunt for monsters so that they would become stronger. But the students were afraid that they would meet their doom since they had never faced off with a monster before. Confident about his success, Mo Fan wondered what would be his prize for finishing the hunt. So Jan Kong told him that he would be rewarded with a magic armor. Before long, the students began climbing up a mountain. When they arrived on a cliff, they decided to tie a rope around a moronic loser, and as he summoned a wind, he jumped to a new cliff and held a rock for his safety before tying the rope around a tree for the rest of the students. When a fat disgusting loser was caught in the vines, Mu Bai cast ice at them and froze up the vines, allowing the fatso to regain his freedom. But as he began to leave, he tripped on the ground because he was too useless to walk on his own. When they arrived before more vines, Ju Min obliterated them with her flames. After a long day of traveling across the mountain, the students arrived at a cave. Since they were assigned to eliminate a one-eyed wolf demon, one student thought that they would all be eaten, but Ju Min tried telling her that they would defeat it. As the students began heading into a cave, Mo Fan told the moronic loser that there was a monster inside, which was drinking water from the stream. 
At this realization, the useless loser hurried into the cave to tell the others. But they called him a disgusting coward and said that his face smelled like shit. Damn! However, when they arrived deeper inside the cave, they saw a monster wolf before them and immediately peed their pants. One of the students tried summoning his light element, but it vanished before him, so he began running away like a loser. Ju Min thought that she could take on the monster, but Mo Fan carried her off before it crushed her into the cave. Inside the cave, Mu Bai activated his badge, and as he transformed into a wizard outfit, he cast a floor of ice to trap the wolf's foot. At the same time, Mo Fan carried Ju Min outside the cave, but after she saw the hopeless crybabies who could not find their way back, she became determined and hurried back to the cave. As she activated her badge, her outfit began to transform, so she summoned her stardust and launched a flame at the wolf, but it merely landed before it. As it broke the ice, it jumped towards the girl, but Jayoting unleashed a lightning at it. However, it blew them off with a breath. Mubai decided to end it, so he tried summoning his element, but the wolf hurried past him, and he fell to the ground. Ju Min tried summoning her stardust once more, but it vanished instantly. Realizing he was surrounded by filthy losers, Mo Fan decided to activate his badge, and as his outfit transformed into a special uniform, he summoned a flame and began casting several flames at the wolf. With the monster ablaze, it flew out of the cave and jumped into the stream. At the same time, Jan Kong was pleased that Mo Fan was able to awaken a level 2 fire burst. However, when he told his assistant to command his pet wolf away from the students, they discovered that the wolf had decided to go rogue. At that moment, the wolf emerged from the stream and was ready to devour a useless frightened girl. But Sayo who saved her just in time, hoping to distract the beast from the other students, he decided to run into the cave. However, when the wolf saw Mo Fan, it blasted a wind that he narrowly dodged before hiding behind a rock. As the beast appeared above him, Zio who flew towards him and managed to save him from getting crushed. So they began to fly deeper into the cave while the monster continued chasing them. With the monster out of sight, one ugly fatso suggested that they abandon Mo Fan and run away. But the girls told him to screw himself and called him a worthless little trash for wanting to abandon a friend. Jan Kong appeared before their eyes and asked for Mo Fan's whereabouts. So Zhu Min told him that he had gone deeper into the cave in an attempt to draw the monster away from everyone. Inside the cave, Zio who continued flying away from the beast. However, they soon arrived at a dead end, and Zio who pushed Mo Fan to safety while the wolf knocked him down with the wind. Determined to end it, Mo Fan began to summon his thunder element and launched a blast at the beast, causing it to slow down. So he summoned a flame and launched it to the top, and as a stalactite broke, it impaled it in that instant. With the beast dead, a light came out of it and entered into Mo Fan's pendant. So he hurried to help his unconscious friend and watched as Jan Kong flew towards him. Jan Kong asked him if he killed the monster and wondered how he must have done it. Mo Fan told him that he caused the stalactite to fall on top of it. But Jan Kong was not convinced and thought that Mo Fan had some other mysterious abilities. Luckily, Mo Fan was able to divert his attention and told him that Zio who needed to be taken to a hospital. So Jan Kong carried him on his back, and they began to leave the cave. Before long, they met the others, and when the teacher wondered what happened to the beast, Jan Kong told the students that only a few of them would be scored an A, while Mo Fan would be scored an S, as he considered it his reward for slaying the beast. By the following day, Jan Kong awarded Mo Fan with a medal for his bravery, and told him to join his army after leaving the academy. But Mo Fan told him that he would pass on his offer and said that his breath stank like garbage. A few months later while meditating, Mo Fan began to wonder how he could increase his thunder element to level 2. Since his level 2 fire element was able to scorch the wolf, he thought that his thunder element would be more powerful to destroy a monster. Realizing he could increase himself much faster through his pendant, Mo Fan thought of upgrading his pendant to the spirit level so that he would improve 4 times as fast. However, since his pendant needed to feed on the soul of spirits and monsters, Mo Fan thought of becoming a bounty hunter so that he would have enough spirits to feed his pendant. By the following day, Mo Fan arrived at the Monster Hunter's Hall and decided to ask a dude how he could become a monster hunter. So the dude told him to join the long queue of losers who were also hoping to become one. He told him that only experienced magicians with the fire element were allowed into the team and that every other element were considered to be worthless. Mo Fan decided to ask if Thunder Magicians were allowed into the team, so the dude told him that they would be accepted in a blink of an eye because they were powerful and difficult to find. Hearing his words, Mo Fan decided to join the queue, 
When he arrived inside the office, a girl from the hunter's team, Zyok, told him that they were only accepting experienced magicians into their team, and that they had no place for a mama's boy. Mofan decided to tell them that he has the thunder element, but they thought he was a disgusting liar, and was too ugly to possess such a unique talent. Before their eyes, Mo Fan began to summon his thunder element, and the queued up losers realized that their chances of making the team were officially screwed. At that moment, the leader appeared before him and welcomed him into the team. When Mo Fan began telling him that he was a weak, hopeless newbie who was too sluggard to even run, the useless leader told him that he would be trained to become the next Usain Bolt. He told the remaining losers to head home and said that their ugly faces would bring him bad dreams. Shortly, he began to introduce Mo Fan to the team, but a lady appeared and told him that a monster had invaded a faraway high school. The leader told Mo Fan that they had to eliminate it immediately, so he offered to follow them. When they arrived at the site, the leader told his team to protect the nearby students and told Mo Fan to check the canteen for the monster. As he began walking through, his phone rang, scaring the shit out of him. His sister told him that she had left her dormitory during the emergency evacuation, but had seen a girl enter the canteen and not return. At that instant, Mo Fan saw a monster staring at him from behind a window. As it fired a blast, he managed to evade it, but the canteen burst into the flame before the fire sprinklers doused it. The monster flew through the glass with a strike, but Mo Fan jumped away, and it began pushing through the tables. As the beast fired another blast, a shield appeared before Mo Fan, and Zyok screamed for him to leave the hall. The team flashed inside, and began to avoid the monster's attacks, while Zyok protected Mo Fan with a shield. The leader tried burning it with the flames, and unleashed a firestorm on it, causing it to fall down. With the team gathered around it, Kai Tang tried unleashing her power, but it flew towards her and evaded Xiaok's shield. As it tried slashing her, Mo Fan cast a lightning to electrocute it, and it fell stiff to the ground. Impressed by his performance, the leader decided to promote Mo Fan to a full-time member of the team. But Mo Fan was only delighted that he would finally earn some money. Before his eyes, a light came out of the beast and entered into his pendant, but Mo Fan was surprised that the others could not see it. Rocky told the leader that a student was reported to have gone missing, and he feared that she may have been dragged away into a tunnel. So the leader suggested that they inform the other magicians to support them in rescuing her. That night, while returning home, Mo Fan found his sister at the phone booth, and she told him that she had been too afraid to go home all by herself, as she feared that he may have become dinner for the monster. So Mo Fan told her that they had eliminated it, and would be safe forever. The following day, the leader gave Mo Fan his own check for slaying the beast, and told him that he had decided to pay him as a full-time member because he was pleased with his bravery. But Mo Fan was only delighted to finally be able to earn money. A few days later at school, Zhu Min told Mo Fan that she wishes to speak with him later in the day. But he thought that she was in love with him, and would be confessing her feelings since he rescued her in the cave, so he accepted to see her. However, that night, when they met at an old factory, she told him that the neighborhood was disturbed by weird noises every night and that she feared that the factory was haunted by ghosts. When he wondered why she did not inform the police, she told him that she had invited him to the site since he was the best student in their academy. As he went up the building, he went through the window, and climbed down a ladder into the factory. While he was scouting for monsters, Ju Min kicked the door in, nearly causing him to piss his pants. As he spread a revealing powder, Ju Min wondered if he had joined the monster's hunter, but he ignored her question. He looked at the monster's footprints and discovered that it was a different beast from the one they had earlier come across. Before their eyes, the demon emerged from a tunnel and began to lick some tomato sauce. Ju Min drew closer to Mo Fan in fear, realizing it was a one-eyed wolf demon, and suggested that they run away. However, Mo Fan soon discovered that the beast had been devouring runaway villagers and was hiding inside the tunnel after every snack. So he told Ju Min to warn everyone about the monster and to inform the police afterwards. But Zhu Min began to call the police immediately. At that instant, the monster spotted them, so Mo Fan carried her off immediately. As he hurried away, afraid for their safety, the wolf burst out of the factory in pursuit. So they dived to the floor, and Mo Fan launched flames at the entrance. But as they hurried off, the beast chased them into a warehouse. As they hid away, Mo Fan told Zhu Min to inform the police immediately, and offered to serve as bait for the beast. But she thought he would be pulverized and suggested that they run away together. As the monster appeared before their eyes, Mo Fan pushed her to safety, allowing her to run off for her dear life. As the monster charged at him, he shielded with his magic armor, but was thrown away and stumbled outside the factory. Before long, the monster appeared before him, 
But as Mo Fan tried summoning a flame, Kai Tang and a random dude appeared at the scene and cast a large ice that trapped the monster's feet. With Mo Fan still in shock, Kai Tang screamed at him to escape, but she did not realize that he was her new teammate and they thought he was a useless coward who was running off like a chicken. So they decided to cast more ice around the beast to restrain it. And before long, the beast was covered entirely in ice. When Mo Fan arrived, the leader told him that the beast was a mutated wolf demon that could end them all in an instant. So Lai Wenji told him to zap it with lightning. As Mo Fan hurled a blast at the monster, it turned red in that instant. So the leader told the team that their duty was to restrain the beast until other magicians arrived. As he let out those words, the ice began to crack, and the wolf emerged and began to upgrade to warrior level. Afraid for himself, Lai Wenji suggested that they run away, but the leader told him to get his shit together, and said that the monster would destroy the neighborhood if it regained its freedom. With the monster continuing to evolve, the leader suggested that they eliminate it immediately. So Rocky cast flames under the ice, and the leader launched a fireball that caused a mighty flame to erupt and knock the beast aside. However, the monster re-emerged and flew towards the team, but Zyok blocked it with a shield before the others jumped away. As the monster tried forcing its way through the shield, Mo Fan saved Zyok and began running off. So the leader blasted it with a mighty flame that spread around the area and rose towards the sky. However, the monster was unhurt and tried approaching the leader, but Rocky summoned Earth before it, and Zyok cast a shield, but it broke down the water. With the leader close to annihilation, Kai Tang launched ice crystals at the monster and flew away before he was destroyed. A random dude trapped the monster in ice and narrowly evaded his doom, but the leader was flung back at a vehicle. Luckily, Mo Fan unleashed a lightning towards the sky and managed to trap the beast inside with a level 2 thunder. As the beast continued to evolve, the hunters realized they were too useless to defeat it, so Lai Wenji suggested once again that they run away. But the leader called him a disgusting coward, and said that his 80-year-old grandma was tougher than him, so he unleashed more flames to support Mo Fan. But when the monster tried devouring him, a great flood swept it away, and a new magician, Yang, appeared behind them. He told them that he would take care of business, and began running towards the monster. As he unleashed a mighty tornado, it raised the beast high into the air, and dropped it hard on the ground. With the monster dead, its soul drifted into Mo Fan's pendant. Kai Tang told Yang that several monsters have been appearing within the city, and wondered if the people should be warned about them, but he told her that the people were better off left in the dark. After returning to the academy, Mo Fan tried sneaking over the fence, but fell after hearing a voice. Delighted to see him alive, Chu Min ran to hold him, but Mo Fan was only happy to feel the warmth of her plot. The following night, Mo Fan tried meditating, but discovered that his pendant would not connect to his soul. However, when he tried waking it, it began to glow, and he realized that it had upgraded to spirit level. A few days later, Mo Fan gave his sister money for a new phone, but she wondered if he had become a bank robber. So he told her that he has a new job as a bounty hunter, and was looking to take care of her as her big brother. Delighted by his words, she decided to tell him that she had awoken her healing magic, and would be able to heal him if he was injured during his monster hunts. A few weeks later, Zio who began to tell Mo Fan that Joyan had invited several guests to his duel, and was hoping to humiliate him like a worthless loser on his son's birthday. After that, Tang Yu appeared before them, and told Mo Fan that the principal was waiting to see him. Inside the principal's office, he told Mo Fan that the winner of his duel would be trained in the Sacred Spring, which was a powerful stream of magical water that harnesses a magician's abilities, but was beginning to vanish. He said that only one young magician was allowed into the Sacred Spring every year, and he hoped that Mo Fan would win the spot. But the teacher told him that he was hopeless, and said that Joyan's son would kick his ass with a blindfold on. However, he wanted Mo Fan to give it his best shot, and to go down like a lonely hero. That night, while Mo Fan was looking at his environment, Joyan's daughter, Mu Ningsu, appeared beside him and told him to abandon the duel. She said that her brother was a cold wicked brute who would crush his soul and body to dust, but Mo Fan was not concerned, and promised to kick his ass instead. After realizing his mind was made up, she decided to ask him why he was willing to risk his life in the battle. So he told her that her father was a horrendous piece of trash who deserved to get his butt whipped for bullying his father. He remembered how Joyan had kicked his father after he was caught trying to run away with her, and had always hoped to make him feel like shit in return. As he summoned a flame, he promised to destroy her brother like he was a useless thief. 
The following day, Mo Fan arrived at the Mu family home for his duel and came across his team who failed to recognize him. Kai Tang was angered by the sight of him and told him that her brother would wipe the floor with his ass. As he began to leave, the team thought he looked familiar, but Kai Tang told them that Mo Fan was the most moronic loser they could ever hope to meet. A few hours later, Jan Kong met Mo Fan while he was eating a meal and wondered if he was finally willing to join his army. But Mo Fan thought he was still useless and told him to f*** off. Shortly, his friends appeared before him and told him that they had come to cheer him for his fight, but he could care less about their disgusting faces. That evening, with all the guests gathered at the arena, Joyeon's son, Yuan, began approaching Mo Fan. As they faced off, Yuan began to freeze Mo Fan's hand and told him that he would kick his ass straight to the hospital. But Mo Fan told him that he would destroy his ugly face and melt it off the ice. As Joyeon commanded the duel to begin, Yuang raised his hand and cast creeping ice towards Mo Fan. But he melted it and launched a flame that Yuang narrowly evaded. Desperate to escape, he activated his magical shoes and vanished from another flame before vanishing again. Looking to stop him, Mo Fan fired a powerful blaze, but Yuang jumped away and jumped back before evading more fires and swooshing away. As Mo Fan unleashed another firestorm, Yuang jumped over him, and as he landed, he told him that he was as useless as his ugly face. He began to unleash a level 3 ice storm that turned the arena floor to ice and caused Mo Fan's flames to vanish. At the same time in the arena, the principal suggested that they call off the duel before Mo Fan froze to his death. But Joyan told him that he wishes to see Mo Fan's ugly face carved in ice. At the same time, Mo Fan's flames continued to vanish, so he decided to awaken the seven stars of his fire element, and as he summoned a flame, more flames began to surround him and rolled up into a firestorm. As he released the fires, it began to melt the ice, so Yuang took off again, but Mo Fan increased the power of his attack, and as it caught Yuang's shoes, it erupted in a mighty explosion and spread a blinding light across the arena. However, Yuang rose again, but was surprised that Mo Fan was able to awaken a level 3 fire element. So he cast his cloak aside and revealed his magic armor, hoping to save Mo Fan from annihilation. Jan Kong told him to abandon the fight and said that Yuang's armor was impenetrable. When Yuang began to call Mo Fan a useless nobody who would continue to be a loser, Mo Fan remembered that his father had hoped for his success as a mage. Inspired by this memory, Mo Fan began to unleash a powerful lightning, and his moronic team finally discovered that he was the same person. As he awakened all seven stars, more thunder surrounded him, and Yuang realized that he was toast and began to say the Lord's prayers. Mo Fan raised his hand and directed the thunderbolt towards him, causing his armor to peel off before engulfing him. However, Yuang would not surrender, so he cast ice stakes to restrain Mo Fan, but he kicked it towards him. As he managed to connect his stars, he destroyed the stakes and rained a powerful lightning on Yuang, before adding the flames for increased flavor. When the battle was over, Mo Fan confronted Joyeon and told him to apologize to his father. So he approached Mo like an honorable man and told him that he was sorry for kicking his ass all those years ago, as he declared Mo Fan the winner. He announced that he would be allowed to train in the Sacred Spring as his reward for winning the duel, so everyone applauded his decision. Later that day, while the students were celebrating Mo Fan's victory, Ju Min told him that she was proud of the man he was becoming and would like to have his babies, but he thought that she was a gold-digging loser and decided to ignore her. A few days later, Zio who met Mo Fan outside a store and asked if he had forgotten about his training at the Sacred Spring. But Mo Fan told him that he intends to spend the entire day with his sister since it was her birthday. However, she managed to persuade him and told him to head for his training, so Zio who promised to take her home. When Mo Fan arrived at the large facility, Joyeon and Tang Yu welcomed him and led him into a secret cave. Joyeon told Mo Fan that he would be locked inside the sacred space for one week, so Tang Yu gave him a special book and told him that it would help him to release mid-tier magic once he reached the mid-tier level. As he began to leave, he came across the team leader who was too moronic to say his name. When Mo Fan wondered why he was in the facility, the leader told him that he was in search for the young student who had gone missing when the monster attacked the high school canteen, and suspected that some powerful magicians were controlling the monsters to cause great destruction inside the city. Before long, Mo Fan arrived at a huge gate, and a security allowed him inside. When Mo Fan arrived in the Sacred Spring, he discovered that his EXP was drastically increasing, and his pendant began to move towards the water. However, when it stopped, Mo Fan began to meditate. Meanwhile, outside the city, a few magicians were patrolling the area, but a monster slashed one of them and was ready to slay them all. At the same time, the army saw red signals in the sky, 
and realized that the monsters were close. Inside the forest, the surviving magicians informed Jan Kong that the monsters had slain the rest of them, but they were soon devoured. At this realization, Jan Kong told his men to activate the emergency alarm, and they did so immediately. Inside the city, the people began to run from monsters, but when one approached a boy, Tang Yu destroyed it with a flame, and watched as a great beast flew across the city. At the same time, several magicians blasted monsters with their flames, but when one appeared before the captain, he punched it with a great fire, causing it to vanish. However, when he tried telling his men to be cautious, a new monster slashed him from behind. A mage told Jan Kong that several beasts had begun to invade the city, so he told his men to rescue the people and eliminate the monsters immediately. In the meantime, Mo Fan tried connecting his stars, but it blew him away. He remembered that Tang Yu had told him that he needed to upgrade his stardust into star clouds before he could achieve a mid-tier level with his elements, but he thought that he was entirely hopeless. Meanwhile in the facility, as Joyeon and Mu Ningsu hurried outside, they found several monsters before them. So Mu Ningxu began casting ice at them, and successfully froze them up in an instant before destroying them. However, a beast fired a blast, and Joyeon was wounded by the explosion. So two magicians summoned a bird, and as they launched flames at the beasts, it flew off with them. On the other hand, Mo Fan tried connecting all his stars, but the cave began to quake, and monsters fell into the facility. As the door opened into the cave, the security told Mo Fan to run for his dear life, but the monster destroyed him before his eyes. Luckily, a girl blasted it with her water element, and entered into the cave. When Mo Fan wondered who she was, she told him that her name was Yu Zin, and that she was the team leader inside the facility. As she touched a bar, the water began to recede, and started flowing into a small bottle. When it appeared before Yu Zin as a tiny bottle, she swiftly hid it away. As they climbed down the steps, a door opened into a secret tunnel, so she told Mo Fan that it was their only way out of the cave, and began to head inside. As they began walking, he wondered how the beast entered the facility. So Yu Zin told him that a black order of magicians had created their own spring of water that turns monsters into mindless beasts, and that they had polluted the rain with this water, causing the monsters to become twice as powerful before invading the city. After a long walk through the cave, they arrived at a ladder, so Yu Zin began to climb to the top, and Mo Fan began to drip when he realized that he would see her beautiful plot, so he decided to enjoy the sight. As they arrived outside, they discovered that a great beast had taken over the city, and that the city was already in ruins. Meanwhile in the city, the people continued running away from the monsters. But when one monster tried to end Mo Fan's sister, a man narrowly saved her from her doom. He told her that their world was about to end, and suggested that she begins reciting the Lord's Prayer. At the same time, Mo Fan began to leave, and told Yu Zin that he intends to find his family. But she decided to give him the little bottle, and told him to hide it in the safe zone as the monsters would come after her in search for it, and said that their world would crumble if the water was stolen away by their enemies. However, Mo Fan was only concerned about seeing his family again, and told her to drink the filthy water, so she called him a useless ignorant moron, and said that his family would be destroyed if the water was lost. At this realization, Mo Fan agreed to protect the bottle, and showed her his family, telling her to pray for their safety and soon hurried away. Shortly, he arrived at the Magic Academy, and discovered that there was a magical shield around it. At the same time inside the Academy, a monster tried devouring a student, while a new monster devoured another. Afraid for herself, a girl tried summoning her element, and managed to vanish into a new hallway, but was ended by another beast. As two girls ran from a monster, Ju Min tried burning it, but as it re-emerged, Mu Bai blasted it with ice. He promised to protect them, and told them to follow him, so they started running up the steps. As a monster rushed to devour the useless Fatso, Mu Bai cast ice to freeze it up. At the same time in a class, one monster was about to end a girl, but the teacher blasted it with his light. When it tried to re-emerge, he ended it instantly. As a beast broke into another class, the useless Fatso tried burning it but discovered that he was too useless to summon his element. In hopes of saving his moronic ass, Zhao Ting unleashed his thunder to destroy it, but soon realized that the ugly Fatso had passed out in fear. At the same time in the hallway, two monsters surrounded Zio Hu and his crush. But when they flew to end them, he vanished in the wind and appeared at the steps. However, his crush was knocked aside by a new beast, and it tried to crush him, but was blasted away by Mo Fan's thunder. As it began to rise, Mo Fan cast his lightning, but it was unscathed, so Zio launched a wind as a distraction, allowing Mo Fan to incinerate it with a powerful flame. With the monster vanquished, Mo Fan suggested that they head for a safer place before newer monsters appeared. 
inside a hall. The teacher told the students that their safest option was to make their way into the safe zone outside the city, so a few students offered to scout the streets for the useless cowards. As Mo Fan and his friends entered the hall, everyone was delighted to see him alive and thought that their savior had arrived. Meanwhile, Yu Xin was running from a great beast. As she blasted a light, it dodged and jumped to end her, but was knocked back by a powerful stream. Young appeared as her savior, and told her that the Black Council were responsible for the monster's assault on the city. He said that they intend to steal their magical water, so that they would utilize the energy inside to command beasts to erase their city. He decided to ask her where she hid the magical water, so she told him that she had asked Mo Fan to hide it in a safe place. Meanwhile, as the students arrived inside the city, the teacher suggested that they separate into smaller groups and scout the road for monsters. When Zio who spotted a monster, he decided to summon the others. But when they arrived, they discovered that the monster had vanished. In hopes of finding the monster again, the teacher told Zio who and Ying Lu to scout the area ahead, so they decided to take off. When Ying Lu arrived in a quiet street, she began to look around, but a sneaky monster ended her with a slash. At the sound of her scream, Mo Fan hurried to the site and discovered that she had been slain. As the students were afraid that they would soon be isekai one useless beast tried sneaking up on Zio's crush, but was spotted just in time. However, it dodged Mo Fan's thunder, but was soon blasted aside before the teacher roasted it like sushi. As they paid their last respects, Mo Fan hoped that he would never see another student eliminated. When the teacher wondered how Mo Fan was able to strike the monster with his thunder, he told him that he was a bounty hunter with a special team, and had upgraded from a useless moron into a local hero. Shortly, Zio who appeared before them, and told them that there were three terrible monsters ahead on the road, so Mo Fan suggested that they eliminate them one after another. A few minutes later, Zio began to spy on a one-eyed beast, and hoped to lure it away from the group. As it spotted him, it began to charge like a crazy bull, and he narrowly dodged its powerful claws. So he summoned a wind, and began to float away, but it pursued him, and as it tried devouring him, he began to swirl from one side to the other. But as he moved through the trees, the wolf managed to strike him. With Zio who wounded, he began to run, but the monster chased him and cut him down with its claws. Luckily, he managed to blast its face and float it away, but the beast was determined to end him, so it started looking for him. Zio who thought he was soon to be isekai but was bent on keeping the beast away from the group. So as it flew to end him, he vanished with a flying shadow, leaving the beast buried under the rubble. Before long, Zio who arrived at a dead end. But as the monster impaled him, he vanished into the air, causing it to stumble into metal poles and was isekai in that instant. At the same time, Mubai was trying to freeze another monster, but the disgusting fatso had peed his pants and suggested that they run for their dear lives. As he began to run off, Mubai ran after him like a useless coward. Meanwhile, Mo Fan and Zhao Ting tried eliminating a wolf, but Zio arrived and passed out from his injuries. At the same time, Mu Bai and the fat loser were running away from the monster, so Mo Fan shot a flame at it. But when the monster began to rise through the fires, he bound it with lightning, and increased the power of the flames until it incinerated before his eyes. With the monsters defeated, Mo Fan suggested that Mu Bai eliminates the monsters with ice stakes in their next battle. But the disgusting Fatso thought that Mu Bai should be the man in charge, and told Mo Fan to stick his command up his ass. However, Mo Fan threatened to knock all his teeth out of his filthy mouth. When they realized that Zio's wound was not healing, the teacher said that they had to find a blood cure for him. But Zio who stopped Mo Fan, and suggested that they abandon him and save themselves. But Mo Fan told him that he was important to the group, and offered to go in search of the blood cure. A few minutes later, the ugly fatso decided to scan the city for monsters, but realized that they had all vanished. So they began traveling again, but wondered why the monsters had gone out of sight. After hearing a noise, Mu Bai tried to look out for monsters, so the group hid behind him for safety. Before their eyes, a great monster appeared before them, and continued quaking the ground with every step. Horrified by the sight, Ju Min wondered what kind of beast it was, so Mu Bai told her that it was a general class monster, and that it could vanquish them all in a blink of an eye. On the other side of the city, one monster tried ending a boy, but Yu Xin blasted it. When another beast joined the party, Jan Kong's assistant, Bai Yang, arrived on his own beast and scared them off. 
When she wondered where he was headed, he told her that he intends to protect a student from the monsters. Inside a store, Mo Fan began to look for the blood cure, but found a hole inside the ground, and discovered a monster doing some nasty business. When it saw him, it fired a blast that went through the roof. Luckily, a blood cure fell before his eyes. As the monster emerged from the hole, it tried attacking him but fell to the outside, and was devoured by the great beast. Mo Fan realized that all the lesser monsters had vanished because they were afraid of the great wolf. But as he began to think he was safe, the beast appeared before him, and started pounding on the roof until the store was destroyed. Meanwhile, as the group began to wonder if Mo Fan had met his doom, he emerged from the ground unscathed. He told them that he managed to escape from the monster, and that he was able to find the blood cure. So the teacher put the cure around Zio's wound, and it healed up instantly. After a few hours, the group started approaching the safe zone, but realized that Bai Yang was standing on the road before them. Bai Yang told Mo Fan that he had come to rescue him, and demanded for the sacred spring. But Mo Fan thought his face smelled like shit, and told him that he would hand it to the commander instead. Desperate to have the water, Bai Yang threatened to eliminate him. With a snap, he summoned three ugly monsters from the ground, and the lion pounced on him using his distraction. When Zio tried to save him, one monster jumped towards him with a strike, but he was protected by a shield. At that moment, he realized that Hiyu had saved him, and discovered that she had been eliminated by another monster. When the beast tried to end him again, Zhao Ting blasted it with thunder while Mu Bai froze it in ice. As it jumped high, Zhu Min incinerated it, and managed to scorch another with her flame burst. With the beasts momentarily defeated, Zio tried saving his crush, but she told him that she was happy to save his life, and that she loves him very much. As more beasts began to appear, Mo Fan managed to connect his stars, and summon fires around him before knocking the monster into the rock. When Bai Yang threatened to annihilate Zio, two students appeared to protect him. Mo Fan realized that there was no way to escape, and began to drink the water instead. Angered by this sight, Bai Yang told him that he would destroy him like a filthy useless garbage. But Mo Fan summoned a powerful lightning, and raised his hand to unleash a vicious strike of thunder, before launching another at Bai Yang. As he evaded it, he told Mo Fan that his abilities were useless, and called himself Mr. Invincible. But Mo Fan dodged a monster's blow, and began to evade the other blows with graceful movements. As one beast dodged Mu Bai's ice, another evaded Zhu Min's flames, and they nearly punched them into the ground. However, Mo Fan had summoned a flame shuriken, and as he burned the monsters with his fires, Ju Min supported him with her own flames. Utilizing her distraction, the lion blasted Ju Min into the rocks, but Mo Fan managed to escape its attacks. At the same time, the teacher was trying to sneak up on Bai Yang, and as he jumped, he cast a blinding light, allowing Mo Fan to unleash a lightning seal. However, Bai Yang was unscathed, and a monster appeared from the ground as his protector. Hoping to end the monster, the teacher cast a brighter light, but the beast was unfazed. However, Mu Bai utilized his distraction, and slayed Bai Yang with his ice, casting him into the rocks. At that instant, all the monsters began to vanish, but Zio continued crying over his slain crush. When Yang and his men arrived, the Fatso accused them of working for the Black Order, and told them that Bai Yang had tried to end them. With Yang shocked by this discovery, Mo Fan decided to tell him that Bai Yang was working with their enemies, and had tried to take the sacred spring from him. However, Yang's men thought the students were the real enemies and had intentionally eliminated their comrade. So Yang suggested that they examine his body to discover the truth. When the group arrived inside the safe zone, they realized that several people were wounded, and wondered if the rest of the students would make it in time. The following day, Mo Fan arrived on a rooftop to meet Jan Kong. So a mage told him that Bai Yang was discovered to be in support of their enemies, and had slain one of the students while they were heading for the safe zone. Shocked by this realization, Jan Kong apologized to Mo Fan for his loss, and demanded for the sacred spring. However, when Mo Fan told him that he drank it, Jan Kong thought he had lost his mind, and threatened to throw him off the building. Afraid of meeting his doom, Mo Fan tried telling him that it was the only way to keep the water away from their enemies, but Jan Kong thought he was better off hugging the ground. However, he decided to pardon him, and began to wonder how the monsters had invaded the city in the first place. He told his men that their only way of defeating the monsters was by eliminating the commander of the beasts, but he feared that it would be a nearly impossible task. However, it was their only chance at recovering the city, so he unleashed his wings and took off to the sky, while his men followed him on large birds. Shortly, Ning Zhu appeared before Mo Fan, and hurried to him, happy to see him alive. But Joyan spotted them, and called Mo Fan a filthy coward for not returning to battle. 
Mo Fan told him that he was the coward and said that his ugly face would make him wank forever. But Ning Zhu protected her father before Mo Fan would knock his teeth out. So he began to leave, but was sad that she was stuck with a useless moronic excuse of a father. That afternoon, when Mo Fan arrived inside an office, he asked if his family had been rescued. So the lady scanned her computer and told him that they were not inside the safe zone, leaving him disappointed. An officer, Cheng, entered the office and suggested that they find the underground passage which was leading the monsters into the city, saying that it was their best bet at stopping the monsters. Hearing his words, Mo Fan remembered that he had found a one-eyed beast at the school canteen, so he told them that the beasts were invading the city through a tunnel inside the school. With this discovery, Cheng suggested that they destroy the tunnels immediately. That evening, Mo Fan came across his father and was delighted to see him again. When he wondered how he was rescued, his hunter teammates appeared and told him that Yu Xin had rescued him from a beast but had died in his place. However, the old man soon began to cry and was afraid that Xin Zia may have also met her doom. The next day, while the teams were about to head out, Mo Fan offered to follow them to the city and told them that he wishes to find his sister. But the students thought he had lost his mind, and his father said he would become dinner for the monsters. But Mo Fan told them that he would not abandon his sister, and was willing to put his life on the line again. Meanwhile in the basement, the people had grown tired of waiting. When a man suggested that they head for the safe zone, another man offered to lead them through an underground tunnel. Excited for the shortcut? They prepared to leave at once, but a girl told them that Xin Zia could not walk and asked that they carry her, but a man told her that Xin Zia would make a delicious meal for the worms and began to leave. He called. Unwilling to abandon her, the girl offered to carry her on her back, but Xin Zia told her to leave without her. As she gave away her bracelet, she told the girl to hand it over to Mo Fan if she finds him and to tell him that she had isekai'd herself. Afraid of getting ditched by the others, the girl ran off. Meanwhile, as Mo Fan and the team arrived inside the city, Officer Cheng suggested that they continue on foot so that they wouldn't draw the monster's attention. Lai Wenji offered to scout the road, so he vanished into the wind. At that instant, three beasts rushed towards him, but he cast his wind to throw them away. Before long, Officer Cheng froze up three monsters and they vanquished before him. As they continued through the city, they heard a noise inside an alley. When Mo Fan tried going for the rescue, Officer Cheng told him that their duty was to destroy the secret tunnel, and that everyone else could become monster meat. Lai Wenji appeared before them, and told Officer Cheng that he had eliminated all the beasts in their path. As they began to leave, a wounded man ran towards them, and passed out on the ground. He was one of the men who had abandoned Xin Zia at the basement, and the group realized that he had been slain by the monsters while trying to sneak through the sewers. Before leaving, Mo Fan noticed a girl wearing his sister's bracelet, so he hurried to her, but discovered that she was not his sister. After spotting Xin Zia's name on the bracelet, he told a nameless girl that he intends to scout the environment. So she told him that the girl's uniform belonged to a nearby supermart, and suggested that all the slain men tried sneaking through the sewers from the mart. Officer Cheng told Mo Fan that his sister was not found among the dead men, so Mo Fan told him that he would search the supermart. At once, he began to transform into his cool wizard outfit and magical cloak before casting his combined elements and began heading off. Meanwhile inside the mart, Xin Zia discovered that ravenous monsters were devouring the fridge. Noticing her presence, one monster tried to look for her and knocked off her chair, but she had luckily hidden inside the refrigerator. Outside in the city, two weirdos working for the Black Order noticed that Officer Cheng and his group were heading to destroy the monster's tunnel. However, when they saw Mo Fan scorching a beast, the masked man offered to destroy him instead. As Mo Fan was hurrying away, he narrowly dodged a monster's attack, and dodged again before escaping into the mart. When he tried finding his way around, the masked man appeared before him, and threatened to crush him like a useless bone. With Mo Fan confused as to who he was, he decided to take off his mask, and told him that he was Yuang, Joyan's son, whose ass he had kicked in the duel. He said that Mo Fan had ruined his face, and had made him to lose his chance of entering the Sacred Spring. He told him that his defeat had caused him a demotion in the Black Order, and that the only way of restoring his ego was by eliminating him. As he began to spill an evil slime, a dozen monsters appeared before Mo Fan. Realizing he could not defeat them, he began to run and cast a mighty inferno at them, but they jumped out of the fires. Mo Fan hurried up the escalator and blasted them with lightning before running off again. At the same time, Yuang was informed by his partner that Officer Cheng and his team had arrived at the tunnel, so he set out to eliminate them, leaving the beasts to continue their attacks. 
but Mo Fan would not surrender to become dinner and continued vanquishing the monsters. However, he soon discovered that he was surrounded, but before they could end him, he hurried into a private room. Inside the room, he discovered that Xin Zia's wheelchair had been destroyed and spotted her hiding inside a refrigerator. As the monsters tried forcing their way inside, Mo Fan realized that they would eliminate him if he tried to leave, but was afraid that Xin Zia would freeze to her death. Inside the mart, Xin Zia was beginning to freeze from all the cold, so she began to crawl away and hid herself. After hiding from a beast, she fell out and rolled away. At the same time, the monsters continued forcing their weight against the door, so Mo Fan decided to upgrade his abilities. When he appeared inside his solar system, he realized that his pendant was beginning to upgrade from the sacred water he drank. As the pendant vanished, a new light appeared, and as the seven star paths began to burn, Mo Fan increased to mid-tier level of his fire element. When the monsters entered the room, they found him in a flaming aura, and he vanquished them in that instant, turning them back into slime. After spotting his fiery power, the other monsters began to run off, but he cast his flames on them, and destroyed the rest with lightning before burning them. Inside the mart, a beast began to trail Xin Zia, but before it could end her, she stabbed its eye. With their brother in pain, the other beasts decided to do him a favor and began to devour him. So Xin Zia rolled over to a freezer and hid from the others. With the monsters waiting to make her their next meal, Mo Fan burned them instantly and pulled her to safety, but she passed out in his arms. Realizing she was freezing from the cold, Mo Fan caused a flame to burn around them and restored her to life. She told him that her life had flashed before her eyes, but was happy to see him again. Mo Fan told her that he would always protect her, and while giving her the bracelet, he said that she would always be special to him. Before long, they arrived outside the mart, and all the monsters began to avoid them. With Xin Zia in surprise, Mo Fan told her that he had upgraded to the mid-tier level with the aid of Tang Yu's book, and that all lower-class monsters would be too afraid to face off with him. As they sat on a bench, Mo Fan told Xin Zia that his team were heading to destroy the secret tunnel, but was afraid that the safe zone would become unsafe if they failed their attempt. Xin Zia told him that the tunnel was a dangerous place and that the missing schoolgirl was abducted after she discovered the spot. At this realization, Mo Fan thought of warning Officer Cheng and the group that the Black Order would be waiting to attack them. But as he said these words, he fell from exhaustion, and Xin Zia realized that he was injured. So she healed his wound, and he was delighted about her ability. When he took her to a motorcycle, he asked her if she could bring the dead back to life, but she told him that her ability only allowed her to heal injuries. However, when he suggested taking her to the safe zone, she told him that she wishes to support him at the tunnel, and that her healing ability would come in handy. In the meantime, Officer Cheng and the group finally arrived at the secret tunnel, and managed to eliminate a monster and save a young girl. When another tried screaming for the others, the group unleashed a combined attack that shone with a colorful light and sent a large rock into the hole. However, it exploded, and several other monsters began to emerge. Desperate to keep them away from the city, the group began to unleash more attacks and managed to destroy them. Inside the city, Mo Fan came across a huge monster that was standing in his way. But as he rode away, it chased him until he swerved into an alley. With both of them safe, Mo Fan told Xin Zia that he intends to take her to the safe zone where she would be safer, but she told him that she would be useless and hopeless without him by her side. At the school, Officer Cheng suggested that they head for a new tunnel since the monsters were limitless, but Yuang and his weirdo partner appeared before them. As Yuang revealed his disgusting face, the group realized that he was the same worthless loser that Joyan had adopted as his son, and Officer Cheng called him a useless piece of trash. Angered by his words, Yuang launched ice at them, but the leader punched the ground and rocks appeared to block them off. So he cast a flame, and the rest of the group unleashed their own, blasting the two morons with a torrent of combined attacks that made them realize they had f***ed up. When his partner tried running off, he was blasted with ice and froze up before hitting the ground. With Yuang about to lose, he threw a mystical orb that dissolved into the ground and summoned a dozen beasts to start attacking the group. However, the group increased their inferno and annihilated the monsters, so Yuang unleashed a mighty ice that caused a great light to spread across the yard. On the other hand, Jan Kong and his team saw the great dragon before them, but it descended to the ground, leaving an army of one-eyed wolves and bone-piercing beasts before it. When a wolf began charging towards them, Jan Kong obliterated it instantly. At the sight of this, the rest of the army started backing away, but the dragon took control over their minds and commanded them into battle. When Jan Kong tried destroying them, a subordinate stood in his way, 
and told him to save his strength while they took care of business. Climbing up a rock, he unleashed a powerful lightning on the wolves before him, while another lost its head as they continued destroying them, allowing their commander to merely walk through. One beast tried attacking him, but was frozen instantly and destroyed. But a mage was crushed, so the commander burned the monster and hurried to him, but his soul left his body. As the commander began walking again, his men continued clearing a path for him, but were squashed and thrown off to a building. By the time all his men were killed, Jan Kong had arrived before the dragon, but it flew away, so he followed it. As he punched it, it flew off to a tower, and screamed a powerful heat that burned the commander's armor and sent him flying towards the ground. But he soon returned, and as he burned with a flame, a rain of fire began to fall onto the dragon. So he utilized the distraction, and rammed into it, creating a massive flaming ball that expanded like the sun. At the same time, a bone-piercing beast began approaching Officer Cheng and his group, but they were too exhausted to unleash any new abilities. Luckily, Mo Fan rode into the yard and hurried to protect them. The team leader told him to run away, but Mo Fan told him that he would have no place to run to if they were all killed. So he walked closer to the beast, and as he began to burn with a mighty flame, he unleashed a great fire that destroyed the monster and several other monsters before sealing up the tunnel. After a few months, Mo Fan and his family began traveling to a new city. With their previous city already destroyed, they hoped to find a new place to call their home. When they arrived at a new apartment, Mo Fan decided to enjoy the site and thought that this new city was lovely. Later that day, he decided to upgrade to a higher tier level. As his pendant began to glow, Mo Fan tried meditating, but fell from exhaustion. Before long, his phone began to ring, and his teacher Tang Yu told him to join her at a restaurant. Excited to see his crush, Mo Fan soon arrived and hoped to score with her. As he took a seat, he told her that she looks beautiful, but she told him to focus on girls his age. She told him that the only way to upgrade his tier level was by connecting his star paths together, but said that he could lose his abilities if he failed to connect them in the right arrangement. Realizing she was a unique magician, Mo Fan wondered who she really was, so she told him that she was a member of the Judge Council, who were a powerful group of people that tracked and eliminated powerful magicians who broke the laws. She told him that she was tracking a member of the Black Order prior to the attack on their city, but had failed to capture him. Mo Fan decided to ask why she had summoned him, so she told him that the town's water had mysteriously dried up, and she intends to discover the truth. She showed him a stranger on the street, and told him to follow him to wherever he went. She said that he was a secret terminator whom she thought was responsible for the town's dried up water, and decided to give him some star's guide, hoping it would protect him from any doom. In exchange for his help, she promised to help him awaken the dark element. Excited by her words, the simp agreed to follow him. Later that day, the mysterious dude appeared before two villagers and asked to know why the river had dried up, but they were totally clueless, so he hurried off to find out for himself. As Mo Fan watched him leave, he thought the dude looked innocent, but Tang Yu appeared behind him and told him to continue trailing him. Before long, Mo Fan started running up the mountains, realizing the dude had vanished from sight. As he came across withered plants, he wondered if the river had truly dried up or had been scorched by a fire magician. Before he knew it, Tang Yu muffled his voice and began to pull him behind a tree, but he was delighted to find peace in between her plots. Shortly, a group of villagers began to walk by, hoping to exploit the dried up river, and Tang Yu pushed Mo Fan away from her plot. As they continued up the mountain, Tang Yu told him that the villagers intend to capture an elemental spirit which was known to multiply a magician's abilities, so that they would sell it for money. Mo Fan wondered how he could increase his abilities to expert tier level, so she told him to find support from a wealthy organization. Realizing it was not an option, he offered to continue working for her, but she pulled him aside, and they hid behind a rock. Ahead of them, the villagers were confronted by a new group from a powerful family. When the leader told the villagers to scram, the lead villager told him that they have equal rights over the field. With neither group willing to leave, they decided to summon their flames for battle. As both group unleashed their flames, the surrounding trees began to burn, and Mo Fan realized that they were using their basic tier elements since it was quicker to unleash. Looking to destroy them, the leader summoned a magic circle that burst into flames, allowing him to cast a fiery punch that began to burn the villagers. But a new villager summoned the ground to shield the rest of the fires, while another cast a mighty wind that blew out the flames and nearly threw everyone away. So the family cast a shield around them, but the tornado managed to destroy it. Desperate for payback, another member cast a powerful slash that destroyed the mountain and threw the villagers aside before they were finished off. 
with the villagers too exhausted to fight. The leader told them to scram before he incinerated their faces like worthless trash, so they hurried off. However, the mysterious dude, Kaohi, appeared behind them and told them that he intends to grant them quick deaths. But the leader called him a piece of shit and told him to get lost. However, when he revealed his face, they discovered that he was a well-known Terminator. As Kao, he began to laugh like a deranged menace. Mystical webs surrounded them, and a demonic spider appeared before their eyes. When they tried to run, it trapped them in a web and began to drain their soul. With Mo Fan in shock, Tang Yu told him that the spider was a spirit-breaking monster whose web was inescapable. Before long, the ground split open, so Tang Yu told Mo Fan that the elemental spirit was about to emerge. Just then, the spirit burst out like a flame, and the menace began to laugh again, realizing it was a rare rose flame spirit. But Mo Fan thought he had lost his mind. Using her dark flash, she began to vanish down the mountain until she appeared behind the menace, watching him absorb the spirit. Utilizing his distraction, she immediately summoned magic circles and combined them into a larger sigil, before growing a mighty nail and launching it forward. But it stuck the ground, and Kao he decided to face her. With her attempt having failed, she decided to tell him that she came to arrest him. However, he was unfazed by her presence, and caused a dark cover to surround them. He told her that he has been following her for a few days, and had put some weird flavor into her food. Just then, Tang Yu began to feel sick and fell to her knees, but Kao he thought she was hot and told her that he wishes to develop plot with her right there. But she started oozing with a great fire, and lava began to spread over the ground, drawing flaming sharks and creating a stream of fires before casting a massive inferno to vanquish Kao he. However, he was able to rise again, and Mo Fan discovered that he was wearing a magic armor, but it dissolved away. At once, the demonic spider appeared, and trapped Tang Yu in its web. When he tried going for the kill, a powerful flame flew towards him, and Mo Fan began to transform into his wizard outfit, before causing the fires to descend on Kao He. But when the dust cleared, Mo Fan realized that he had protected himself with a mystical light. Kao He called him a spineless coward, and told him to try attacking him like a real man. Realizing he had no chance at defeating him, Mo Fan told him to absorb all the elemental spirit but asked him to spare his crush. Taking him for another scoundrel like himself, Kao he accepted his deal, but was sad to abandon his intentions of developing plot with her. However, when Mo Fan managed to draw closer to him, he summoned a magic circle and told him that he had upgraded to mid-tier lightning. With Kao he shocked by this confession, Mo Fan raised his hand to summon a powerful lightning that destroyed Kao he and made the dark cover to vanish. Mo Fan tried hurrying to Tang Yu, but she told him to back away as she was ashamed of herself. However, when he was determined to help her anyway, she threatened to burn him to crisp, and told him to absorb the elemental spirit before it vanished. So Mo Fan touched it, and started drawing the power into himself. At once, he found himself inside his solar system, and as the elemental spirit flowed into his star cloud, Mo Fan absorbed all the flame, and water started forming again. As they began to leave, Tang Yu found Kaohi's dark ring, and decided to take it for the judge council as proof of his death. While riding off in a taxi, Tang Yu told Mo Fan that the elemental spirit will make him invincible towards fire attacks, and that he would have the ability to annihilate every enemy. Mo Fan wondered why she had tried to capture Kaohi, so she told him that she intended to discover the secrets of the Black Order, so that she would destroy their next attempts at attacking a new city. As Tang Yu began to heat up, she pulled Mo Fan towards her plot so that they would climax together, but she pushed him away after realizing he was a newbie. After an awkward silence, she decided to give him another shot, but before they could develop plot, she pushed him off again and Mo Fan thought her mood swings would ruin his hope of ever getting laid. Later that night, Mo Fan received a message from Tang Yu, who threatened to end him if he revealed to anyone that she had asked for his bone. When he told her that he was man enough to make her climax, she told him to practice with other girls, but she couldn't stop thinking about his bone. As Mo Fan started returning home, he remembered that Tang Yu had told him not to depend on his star guide for upgrading his star element, as she thought it would make his upgrade difficult to achieve. However, Mo Fan was only interested in aligning his star's map, so he decided to start training himself until he was fit for the university. As he received a message from Tang Yu, she told him that she was willing to complete their end of the deal, and promised to help him reawaken a new element at a special mage facility. The following day, as Mo Fan arrived inside the facility, he introduced himself to the hot receptionist. After realizing who he was, she immediately led him into the awakening room. Inside the room, the man in charge appeared before Mo Fan with an awakening stone for a lightning element, 
and called him a rich useless kid who did not deserve the gift. He told him that his inward abilities would determine his awakened element. But Mo Fan had heard this shit before, so he told him that he intends to awaken a dark element. When the dark stone was placed before him, the man thought that he was hopeless and useless. But Mo Fan touched the stone, and as it glowed with a bright light, he found himself inside his solar system. As a dark ball began to form before him, he discovered that he had awakened his dark element. With his newfound success, he thought it would be easier to get laid at the university, and as the stone began to glow with a brighter light, Mo Fan thought he was about to acquire an additional element, but wondered why the stardust had no color. When the man spotted it, he told Mo Fan that he had awakened a rare summoning element, and said that his rich family would be proud of him. But Mo Fan thought he had him mixed up for someone else. As he arrived home, he found his sister meditating, and wished to help her walk again. So he became determined, and thought of training harder until he could afford a pair of magical wings for her. As he began to meditate inside his solar system, he managed to align his stars, and as a bright star shone before him, he discovered that he could finally upgrade his tier to a higher level. As the days passed, Mo Fan continued meditating in his solar system, and was able to upgrade to level 3 Stardust. A few weeks later, Mo Fan arrived at the university for his interview, and was confident that he would be admitted into the school. However, when the judges began to think he was not good enough, he told them that he was willing to prove himself. So the principal told him that he would only be accepted if he managed to impress them with his summoning element, and gave him one week to practice. While returning home, Mo Fan decided to call Tang Yu, and requested for her help in developing his summon element. When they met on a bridge, he told her that she looks beautiful, but she told him that he was ugly and disgusting. As they took a walk, she told him that the summon spell was difficult to perfect, and once he began, his soul would wander through a dimensional world in search of a monster that he could tame. After a few days, Mo Fan was ready for his exam at the university. As he began his summoning spell, he remembered that Tang Yu had told him to try the spell on the day they met, and had promised to help him if the spell went south. As his pendant shone, his eyes lit up, and his outfit started transforming into a wizard cape. But once, a strange darkness spread across the ground, and Mo Fan began to run inside the summoning dimension. Suddenly, a beast roared before him, and he fell down a mountain. However, when he saw the wolf, he was delighted, and decided to choose it for himself. After a few minutes, he took a rope and tried to capture it, but it nearly crushed him. At the same time, he began to cough up tomato sauce in the real world, as he was weakened from staying inside the dimension for too long. When Mo Fan realized that he could not tame the wolf by his physical strength, he decided to summon a sigil, and as he cast a light to fall on top of the beast, it went back into him, sealing his control over the wolf. So they became best buds, and a mark appeared on the beast. At the examination, the judges were in shock to realize that Mo Fan successfully tamed a beast before them. As the wolf jumped out of the magic circle, they realized that it was a spirit wolf breed. However, Lu Song, who was hoping to find a spot into the university, was not impressed, and threatened to destroy the wolf like a pup. As he vanished using his earth wave, he challenged the wolf to a spar, so Mo Fan accepted. At Mo Fan's command, the beast spewed a mighty sand, but Lu Song vanished, and summoned an earth wave to slow down the beast. But it started running faster, and as he summoned a wall, it jumped over it but he vanished and began to run like a useless slug. Determined to prove his strength, Lu Song caused the ground to open, and large ice chains emerged to bind the wolf. But Mo Fan became angry, and his eyes started glowing. Raising his hand, he summoned a dark cloud over Lu Song, ready to annihilate him with his thunder. But they realized that he was a mid-tier lightning magician. Mo Fan called Lu Song a worthless scum, and threatened to obliterate him for hurting his wolf. Afraid of the pending disaster, the judges asked Mo Fan to pardon the useless scum, and said that they would have accepted him at once if he told them that he was a lightning mage. As the chains vanished from the wolf, Mo Fan made the dark clouds disappear, and the wolf returned to him. With peace restored, the principal told Mo Fan that he has been accepted into the university, and that he would be admitted into the summoning class. After a few weeks, Mo Fan walked into the institution, and was delighted to see his dreams come true. But inside the class, he discovered that there were only seven students who were accepted into this department, and that his chances of getting laid was close to zero. The teacher, Mr. Jiang, told the students that this class was a special one, and said that they would be competing with other students in a welcoming ceremony to test their full abilities. But the students wondered what kind of test he was talking about. Later that day, when Mo Fan arrived at his new dormitory, a new student entered the room, 
and Mo Fan thought he would have all the best pickup lines for the girls because his hair looked cool. The dude introduced himself as Man Yan, but when Mo Fan tried introducing himself, another dude appeared and told them he was Pingu, their third roommate. When Man Yan asked Mo Fan about his element, he told them that he only has the summoning element. Pingu told him that his welcoming ceremony would be a beast combat event at the school's arena with other freshers like himself, who were willing to challenge his summoning beast and prove their abilities to everyone. Pingu told him that his best bet of scoring with the girls was by winning the event. However, that evening, Mo Fan began to miss his crush and wished that he could rest in between Tang Yu's plot once again. As he began to meditate, he appeared in his solar system and a sigil formed behind him. Before he knew it, he was walking in the summoning dimension, and his wolf was delighted to see him. With his pendant, he passed a magical energy into the wolf, telling it that he had achieved level 3 on the summon element Stardust. Before long, they started running down the dimensional field. The next day, with Mo Fan ready for the welcoming ceremony, Man Yan told him he was mysterious, and decided to ask about his summoned beast. So Mo Fan told him that he has a spirit wolf. At that moment, his head began to hurt, and he started running inside the summoning dimension. Before his eyes, the wolf was battling a large bird, and as he clawed at it, he managed to pull it to the ground but it flew away. Mo Fan rushed to the beast, and realizing it was badly wounded, he cast a mystical energy from his pendant to restore it to life. Inside the school's arena, Mo Fan's teammates were ready for the battle, but they thought he was a useless undesirable loser who would bring them nothing but loss. When the principal commanded for the event to begin, Hai Fu stepped forward for the challenge, and a new group of students appeared before him. As they rushed forward, Hai Fu summoned his sigil, and a large crack tore through the ground, allowing a great scorpion to emerge. Afraid for their lives, the morons began to run off, but the monster chased them, and tried to smash one before nearly biting another. Realizing the students were about to be pulverized, one teacher decided to summon a magic circle, and caused a rock to appear before the scorpion. But the student returned to utilize this opportunity and cast a blinding light at the monster. Haifu told the dude that his monster was unfazed by light, so it punched the ground and knocked the student into a wall before he fell into a gutter. Looking to avenge their friend, another student raised his hand to summon lightning and slashed it at the scorpion to create a wound, but it stabbed the ground before them. With the rest of the students afraid, the monster knocked them aside. However, another group of students started unleashing their own elements until the monster vanished. Realizing they were starting to lose, Wang Lin pushed off a classmate, telling him to take on the next challenge. But he was too chicken, and asked Mo Fan to take his spot. But he told him that his wolf was injured, and that he needed a break. With no one else willing to take his place, the kid decided to step forward. As he summoned a sigil, everyone thought a huge monster was about to emerge. However, a puppy appeared before them, and everyone began to laugh at the disgusting loser. Hoping to humiliate him, a student darted towards him, and started vanishing while evading the pup until the loser fell down in shame. When he was gone, another classmate appeared and immediately commanded a stone monster out of the ground. As the students ran from its mighty fists, some other students unleashed their flames at it, but it was unscathed and destroyed them with a blow. However, they started unleashing their combined elements and successfully cracked its mud skin. With his monster about to be destroyed, the dude decided to surrender. Just then, a new classmate, Wang Lai, began to summon a bone-piercing bird. As it landed before the students, Wang Lai threatened to make his beast eat their bones for breakfast. However, Lu Song decided to challenge him and promised to cook his bird after slaying it. As the beast flew towards him, Lu Song cast ice across the ground, and ice chains emerged to bind the beast, throwing Wang Lai to the ice. At that instant, the beast froze up and vanquished. Realizing his job was done, Lu Song began to leave, but the other students thought that Mo Fan was a disgraceful loser who was too afraid to get his ass kicked. When Mo Fan tried confronting them, Mr. Jiang told him to ignore their voices and return to his dormitory. But Mo Fan told him that his wolf had recovered from his injury. As he stood before the challengers, he cast a sigil that summoned his wolf from the ground. With a mighty roar, the beast blew the enemies away. And as a new group surrounded the wolf, a girl cast a water shield to protect a dude, but the wolf jumped towards him and destroyed the shield. Another blasted it with lightning, but the beast was unscathed and created a tornado with a roar. But the last dude retreated using his earth wave, 
and decided to cast a vine wall as cover. However, the wolf destroyed it, and the girl passed out in fear, but the beast merely licked his face and began to leave. Shortly, Mo Fan's classmates decided to thank him for guaranteeing their success, but Mo Fan asked the principal why they were the only students who had something to lose from failing the contest. The principal told him that they would be rewarded with the resources meant for the other students if they managed to survive the attacks from all the students. Mo Fan thought it was a great deal, and decided to challenge everyone promising to take their resources for himself. Before long, the students gathered before him and called him an ugly brainless newbie who deserved to be pulverized for his ambitions. But Mo Fan was determined to become the strongest magician in the school and thought that he could only achieve it by acquiring their resources for himself. As the students unleashed their elements, the wolf shielded it away and destroyed them all. When newer students appeared, they immediately summoned their elements. As one student cast his fires at the beast, it spread them to the remaining students and was unscathed. However, a new student arrived and introduced himself to everyone. He said that he was from the Zhuang family and had come to annihilate Mo Fan. As he cast a mighty tornado, hoping to hurl the beast aside, it jumped towards him and ripped his clothes. So Zhuang increased the power of his wind, and a girl supported him with her flames, finally blasting the wolf into the air. But it shrugged off the attack. At Mo Fan's command, it started running towards the girl. But magical vines appeared from the ground and managed to restrain it. However, it broke free and eventually knocked the girl away. Looking to end him, another student unleashed a mighty wind and was soon running towards him. So Mo Fan summoned his lightning and tried ending him, but as he managed to dodge, the last scorched him like a fish. With the rest of the students gathered before him, they tried running to him, but the wolf obliterated them before Mo Fan unleashed a rain of thunder to fry them up. Hoping to defeat him, a useless moron from a wealthy family called Kang decided to confront Mo Fan. He told him that he was a disgusting nobody from a family of nobodies who was only deserving to wipe his ass. But Mo Fan said that he would rather kick his ass. Raising his hand, Mo Fan summoned a dark cloud over him and a powerful lightning descended on him. But luckily, he was saved by a magical cover from his teacher, and he realized that the ground was scorched around him. However, when he threatened to unleash his own attack, the teacher told him that he was disqualified for being too useless and summoned a wind to throw him aside when he tried to be stubborn. With only a victory away from winning the contest, the teacher told Mo Fan to continue his reign of terror. But the other students ran away in fear. However, a new girl, Mu Nu, decided to take up the challenge of becoming Wonder Woman. As she approached him, she told him that she would be his new challenger. But he thought she was too hot for a duel and offered to split his winnings with her because he was a moronic simp. However, she thought he was too ugly and told him that his face looked like shit. Yo. That one there was a violation, personally I wouldn't have it. As a fierce wind started blowing around them, Mo Fan offered her a 50-50 split of his winnings, but she told him to screw himself and cast a new wind to throw him away. With no chance of fighting back, Mo Fan tried escaping on his wolf, but the wind blew him away. However, the beast continued charging its way through, until it was caught up in the wind. As it began to fall towards the ground, Mu Nu cast a breeze to ease its landing, leaving it exhausted. Mo Fan thanked her for her mercy and told the beast to return to its dimensional world. As it vanished, he summoned a powerful thunder that Mu Nu managed to evade, so he cast a lightning from the sky, but she dodged with a flying shadow. As she cast a sigil, she released a spell that summoned thick vines to trap Mo Fan, but their teacher wondered how the welcoming ceremony became a full-blown battle. As the students began to celebrate her victory, Mu Nu decided to part the vines and told Mo Fan to surrender like a hopeless loser, but realized that he was not inside the prison. Before she knew it, he appeared behind her using his dark flash and told her that he could easily destroy her like trash. So she made the vines return into the ground and surrendered as the loser. With all the students displeased with the outcome, the principal told them that Mo Fan was a useless nobody from a ruined city and that they were better off drawing inspiration from his sad story to become the next Merlin. He said that Mo Fan would be offered all their resources, and that they could jump off a cliff if they were not satisfied. Delighted with his success, Mo Fan's classmates began to throw him into the air. The following day, Mo Fan realized that his other roommates had vanished, so Ping Gu told him that they ran away because they were afraid of him. Banyan told him that all the students hate him for stealing their resources, but Mo Fan thought they were a bunch of moronic losers who never deserved anything. Set your heart ablaze, go beyond your limits, and watch this next video.